think that, or I, I mean, I guess it's not really a question. It's like, I, I really, I do feel like this is going to be a book um, like Curtis Sittenfeld's Prep is another one that people of all ages really do buy and read. Um, do you have... I mean, do you have a, like a vision? Like, what is your? You spent so long trying to yeah. make this happen. Do you have, like, what in your in your hopes and dreams? What what happens next? You know, I don't know. It's kind of it's it's in the it's back out into the world again, um, and so it, it, it acquires a it, it, its own momentum, and people take it how they take it. You know, it was actually fun to read a blogger who really didn't like it and wrote about it. Yeah. <laughs> And just, you know, like, oh, wow, there's, there's that perspective on it, too. It's just every time I see how someone reads it, um, it's just a different perspective. And also, you know, just trying to form an image of, of who this person was behind the book. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, that's, that's, really, that's really good of you, I think, <laughs> to read, to read even, even less than positive reviews and feel sort of... Um, well, I disagreed right with it. No, oh, of course, they were wrong. <laughs> Whatever they said, they were wrong. It was, a, you know, Courtney chooses such horrible friends, and, and Janet isn't really good for her. I think she should get different friends. And I was like, this isn't a self-help book. This no. isn't like how to live your life. As a no. matter of fact, it's not how to, do not try to live your life like this. Yeah. It's, it's fiction. <laughs> but whatever. It's, it's, yeah. It's I mean, and I, true. like, I just, I mean, the part of the pleasure for me of listening to all those sections again was how much I actually really do like those people. I don't know, maybe I'm just susceptible to a certain kind of grandeur in my teenagers, but like, I mean, I think they're great. I want to go hang out by the pool at the Garden of Allah. It's not there anymore. I know. As a matter of fact, someone who lived there is here, Pamela's sister. <laughs> was it as nice as it sounds? Oh, God, they are all envious. Uh, yeah. Megan especially <laughs> is really ready to ask you a lot of questions, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and for me, reading the book, that was that was one of the really great things about it is that I, I was writing this book about Hollywood um, in, in about the same years, um, and I just kept finding things. I mean, to me, it, it felt so... Um, so immediate, like the action in it felt so immediate that I felt like I was reading something um, that was so much more alive than a lot of the research that I'd been doing. Like mm. I'd been reading a lot of um, a lot of biographies and things like that, and I just I don't know for some reason reading Pamela's fictional account right. of Hollywood just um, made everything so much uh, more vivid for me. Because well, it's a teenage. I mean, it is a teenage. You know, even though if, whether it's shocking or surprising the adult, it's a teenage perspective. Yeah. And which finds the adult world to be completely ludicrous yeah. and phony. Yeah. And just looking through people and just be like, why? Why do you even pretend? Just you know, look, you know, like this whole act of adulthood of going through the motions of pretending something, and she's just seeing right through it all. Yeah. And I guess Hollywood was especially conducive to being seen that way. Sure. Uh, oh. And her mom. <coughs> Apparent, oh. Apparently, her mom was actually a lot more harsh than, than <laughs> the mom in the book. She toned it down. I don't. There, there are folks that I didn't actually know her. Yeah. But she was. She was a. Um, a character. I mean, she was, truly. Um, and someone to be reckoned with, you know. Because back in that day, you know, there's this passage where, like, you know, Courtney's mother. Um, actually cared more about her career than getting affirmation from some man. Mm -hmm. And that was weird, like, yeah. right? That, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't common back then. So, and, I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear you sort of talk about the, the um, autobiographical elements. Yeah. And then, you know, knowing, I mean, because you started putting all this together, you know, so it was like, 40 years about after the book came out, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then because it must have been sort of like a sort of a two-track um, 
sorry, I'm nine months pregnant. My brain is really <laughs> not operating at its peak. Um, but it's, it's sort of simultaneous stories happening for you where you, you're both sort of, uh, you know, getting the, the fun of like putting together the book and then also sort of learning more from, from all these people who you're talking right. to about the story behind the story and about your mom. And I mean, that right. just seems. And, well, and there's a tendency to confuse the two. Right. You know, you're, you're, there, there is the fictional and there is the person who wrote it. And however much they overlap, um, the temptation is to just conflate them. Right. And as you're probably aware, that is not always the case. No, no, <laughs> certainly not. I mean, and, you know, I think that that's, um, you know, it is, it, it's, a, it's sort of a dangerous game to play. Right. Um, so it's certainly dangerous to take any any fictional um, book as you know as your as your absolute guide. Right. Um, that seems like folly. And, and yes, so again, don't don't read this as a how to. <laughs> no. How to survive your teenage years. Although I mean, it, like it, I mean, it's pretty. It, I grew up. I grew up in Manhattan. You know, and I I went to a lot of parties in the Upper East Side in people's apartments drinking things at 10 a.m. Like, sorry, Mom. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Um, 